This is the stand. This is the stand. I don't know what I just watched. Greetings, Dave here, DCBFX. Um, not properly today, I, I just finished Episode 9 of the 2020 version of The Stand. Or I guess, in this case, The Stand. I don't understand what the thought was. It... So, Stephen King wrote a new coda for you know, the end of it, too. Uh, he said he wanted to you know, give Fran a better, uh, a better arc and everything else. It's crap. It... These nine episodes were terrible because everyone's got this whole Tarantino thought that we have to go back and forward. Is that did, 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 did. this starts off plague? People get sick, people die, survivors get together, they go to either um, Nebraska or Colorado or to Vegas. Good to Nebraska, bad to Vegas. There's a fight. Vegas blows up. The survivors are done and fine and good. This crap. It's all over the place. And um, even... I, the actors are okay. They're pretty good in, you know, for what they've been given. Um, James Marsden, you know, he's no Gary Sinise, but... He, he's a good actor. He, he brings the aw shucks every man vibe. And he was fine. He was fine. He's a good, good enough Stu Redmond. Um, Glenn Bateman. You know, Ray Walson originally. Greg Kinnear. Greg Kinnear was good. You know, what was given. He was given. He was pretty good. You know, it made him more of a hippie and everything else. And that's fine too. But I just, I don't see what was the point of making this. Like, granted, the production values were better. But that was it. You know? And even... Uh, Miguel Ferrer as Lloyd Henry, believable as someone who could run something. The guy they had, what is it, something Nate Wolf or something, whatever. He was a tool. He's who would who would listen to him? Anyway, um, I saw the whole thing, and my kids kept saying, "Why do you do this to yourself? Why are you watching this? Because you don't seem to enjoy." It. I said, "Well, I love the stand. I cannot tell you. I have three copies of this." Because I keep wearing it out. I had the first one, wore it out. Second one, wore it out. Found this one, five bucks at Walmart, so another one. And even then, I have the artist edition. So people say, well, what, what, what do you know about this? I, this is the author's edition. This is the complete and uncut. This is the 1135-page uh, doorstop that Stephen King wrote. It... And also, too, one other thing. What's implied in the book and what's implied in the original miniseries is that the people who survived had a little something extra. A little, you know, as Randall says, a little uh, psychic twinkle. Um, you know, like Stu Redman was a very, uh, you know, very, uh, what's the way they put it? Um, uh, a very unrestive sleeper. He was very, very vivid dreams. Um, it's almost like you're implying that all those who survived are slightly psychic. That's how they were able to tune in to Mother Abigail or Randall Flagg. Uh, so they all had that ability. In this version, most of their morons, like Fran's all alone with a new baby. I don't walk out in this old rickety deck where the water is and see what's going on. Like, there's no one around. Everyone else is dead and your husband is gone 10 miles away. It's just, they're all idiots. They're all idiots. And I just, I don't, I don't know what the whole point of this is. Uh, apparently Stephen King wanted to write something, a better ending, and his son Owen wanted to produce it. But um, if you were thinking about watching it, love yourself more and don't. It, well, I can tell you what to do. It's just, I saw it. I love the stand. I hate this. Um, there are just some parts of it I just do not like. They dropped anything special about Tom Cullen. To me, Bill Fosherbach is Tom Cullen. He was such a good Tom Cullen, sort of fit what was described in the books. And this uh, Brad William Hankey, nothing against the guy, but his Tom Cullen was whatever. Um, we didn't see anything in 
how Nick and Tom became friends. They suddenly were. We see any of that, that bonding that was in the original miniseries or in the book. And at the end, uh, we don't even see Tom rescuing Stu. It's implied because they show up later, but it's implied. Uh, like, what about the showing of it in Green River and all this other things? It just, it shows, you know, the, the, the bond that then Tom gets with Stu. Like, it makes no sense with Tom being all sad about Stu leaving because we have no reason to know that they're good friends because we didn't see any of it. You know, if you're going to make a movie, as they say, show, don't tell, especially in the visual media like this. If you're writing a book, obviously tell because you're writing, you're telling. But in, in the media like uh, like video and TV, show, don't tell. Anyway, that's my rant on this. Would I recommend this? No, I would give this... Um, Okay, the actors did a decent job on the you know the ones that who did an okay job. Two out of ten. Two out of ten. I just I don't see the point of doing this. I don't see why this was made. It just yeah. But that's just my take on it. It's not yours. Please, if you want to watch it, go right ahead. It's on CBS All Access, uh, or you can acquire it other means. It just I kept hoping it was going to get better, and it never did. The only saving grace was once we got to like episode three, they stopped the jump back and forth in time uh, and it's like let's progress but the whole thing about this is this is the stand the world dies and the, the few that are left come together and then go and that's how it ends not we're here we're there we're there 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 rant over so uh thanks for stopping by thanks for listening to my rant or if you stuck the way all the way to the end really appreciate it uh if you didn't well i, I can understand you, you bailing early too so that's it for today have yourself a great day and we'll talk to you all later